Because we can see complex geological features on land with our own eyes, the existence of mountains, river valleys, and other types of terrain is obvious to us. The story is different for the ocean basins because the ocean floor is invisible. In fact, as recently as the mid-1800s, most in the scientific community believed that the bottom of the deep oceans were featureless, lifeless abysses. This began to change in the 1860s and 70s when dredges pulled up life from the deep ocean and global surveys using weighted cables revealed variations in water depth across entire ocean basins. As more soundings were done, it became clear that the seafloor was as varied and dynamic as the land above sea level. The development of echo sounders and sonar in the early 20th century dramatically increased the rate at which the seafloor was mapped. And while sonar remains the most accurate way to map the ocean bottom, it is slow. Even now, over 100 years after sonar mapping began, only about 15% of the ocean bottom has been mapped by sonar. The basin-wide views that many of us are familiar with are not based on sonar. They are made from space using satellite altimetry data to image the seafloor on a truly global scale. These global maps reveal that the seafloor contains some of the largest geological features on the planet and helped revolutionize our understanding of the Earth. Seafloor data provided evidence that led to the widespread acceptance of the theory of plate tectonics. On land, the term topography describes features based on measuring the height of points above the sea surface. The mapping and description of the ocean bottom is called bathymetry because the bottom is mapped by measuring the depth of features below the sea surface. Most of the ocean bottom is younger and less deformed by geological activity than the surface of the continents, and since rates of erosion are much lower in the oceans, evidence of the processes that shape our planet remain present longer, giving scientists a powerful view into the Earth's history. Regions of the seafloor can be broken into provinces based on the local bathymetry. The shallow area at the edge of the continents are called the continental margins. From a geological perspective, there is no difference between the continental margins and the land just above sea level. The only reason the margins are part of the oceans is that there is more water on the surface than the deep ocean basins can hold. As a result, excess water has spilled over up onto the edges of the continents. Due to high rates of erosion off of land, the continental margins are covered by a thick wedge of sediment, an example of which is shown here off the east coast of the U.S. The margin is divided into three regions. The area closest to the land is called the continental shelf. It is a continuation of the continent which extends underwater. The rock under the shelf is granitic continental crust. Continental shelves tend to have very shallow slopes of 1% or less due to all of the sediment deposited there. The shelf extends to a point where the slope increases. This is called the shelf break. The average depth at which the shelf break occurs is around 135 meters. The area beyond the break is called the continental slope. The slope's slope is similar to that of many mountains, ranging from as low as 1% to as much as 25%, with an average of around 4%. The sides of the continental slope are marked by huge V-shaped submarine canyons cut deep into the piles of sediment sitting on the continental crust. It is not completely clear how the canyons form. The best evidence suggests that underwater avalanches of muddy water and rocks called turbidity currents flow down the slopes carving the canyons as they go. The canyons are huge features. For example, the Hudson Submarine Canyon off the coast of New York is wider, deeper, and longer than the Grand Canyon. At the base of the continental slope, the ground levels off again onto an area called the continental rise. This is the transition zone between the edge of the continental margin and the deep ocean basin. In many parts of the world, this region is also covered by deep layers of sediment that have flowed down the continental slope, but the rise is beyond the plate boundary, so the crust beneath the rise is basalt-rich oceanic crust. Evidence in support of the role of turbidity flows in transporting sediment to the deep ocean is the existence of fan-like sediment deposits at the base of the canyon spreading out onto the surrounding continental rise. The width of the margins vary depending upon the type of boundary between the continental and oceanic plates. Passive margins occur along edges where the boundary is not active. The east coast of the U.S. shown here is a good example of a passive margin. Passive margins are formed when rifting splits a continental landmass and ocean spreading pushes the two pieces of continental crust apart, leaving the active rift margin in the middle of the ocean basin far from the edge of the continents. 
They tend to be wide with well-defined shelves, slopes, and rises. Active margins occur where there is tectonic activity on the boundary between the oceanic and continental plates. Convergent active margins are the most distinct. They occur where the oceanic and continental plates are converging and the oceanic plate is subducting below the continental plate. Characteristic features include volcanic activity on the edge of the continental plate, a narrow offshore shelf transitioning to a steep slope into a deep trench that marks the boundary between the plates. These long, narrow trenches are some of the deepest spots on Earth. There is less sediment along active convergent margins because what sediment that is present falls into the trench. Due to volcanic activity, large volcanic arcs form along the landward side of the trenches. When the trench is offshore, arc islands like Japan form. When the trench is right along the edge of a continent, volcanic activity forms continental arcs such as the Andes Mountains in South America. There is a second type of active margin called a transform active margin where two plates are sliding past each other. These margins have less distinct characteristics. The deep ocean begins on the seaward side of the trenches along active margins and at the base of the rise of passive margins. The deep oceans cover vast areas of the Earth's surface, with average depths ranging from 4,500 to 6,000 meters. Large regions of the deep oceans are covered by abyssal plains, which are large, flat regions covered by thick layers of sediment that have accumulated over millions of years. All of this sediment makes the abyssal plains the flattest places on the surface of the Earth. The extent of the abyssal plains makes them, by area, the largest habitat on the planet. As with other features of the ocean bottom, the type of continental margins bordering the area determine the distribution of abyssal plains. They are extensive off of passive margins due to the readily available source of sediment to coat the bottom. They are less common in basins surrounded by active margins, like the Pacific, because the presence of deep trenches prevent the transport of large quantities of sediment off the continents into the deep ocean. Abyssal plains are not completely featureless. In some regions, there are abundant volcanic hills and mountains rising up off of the ocean floor. Ones that are less than a thousand meters high are called abyssal hills or sea knolls. Due to the extent of the ocean bottom, abyssal hills are one of the most abundant geological features on the planet. They are considered biodiversity hotspots, providing important habitat for a variety of deep sea organisms. Mountains that rise more than a thousand meters above the bottom are called seamounts. They are large undersea volcanoes. Many are extinct, but some remain active. Some have flattened tops due to erosion by wave action during times when sea level was lower. These flat-topped seamounts are called table mounts or geodes. The final major province of the seafloor is the mid-ocean ridge system. The ridges are the result of seafloor spreading along divergent plate boundaries and are where new oceanic crust forms. The Mid-Ocean Ridge System is the Earth's longest mountain range, running over 70,000 kilometers. They are shallow relative to the surrounding deep ocean, rising as much as 2.5 kilometers above the surrounding area. The ridges are the result of volcanic activity. A series of deep clefts run down the middle of the ridges. These are the actual rifts where the two oceanic plates are moving away from each other. Cracks running perpendicular to the rifts give the mid-ocean ridges a distinctive zigzag zipper-like appearance. These are called transform faults. They form due to different regions of the plate spreading at different rates. In some places, the transform faults can extend hundreds of kilometers from the center of the ridges. The global coverage of the satellite maps have given us a better understanding of the range of elevations on the planet. This information has allowed us to chart elevation distributions on a hypsographic curve. This curve shows the relationship between the height of the land surface and the depth of the oceans. It is a cumulative curve, starting at the highest point on land, which is the 8.8 kilometer peak of Mount Everest in the Himalayas. From there, the curve shows elevation range dropping to the sea surface with about 29% of the surface above sea level. The rest of the Earth's surface is below the water. The shallowest regions are mostly the continental shells, which cover about 22% of the sea floor, or 14% of the total surface of the Earth. Deep ocean basins cover about 42% of the Earth's surface, which is more than any other province. The remaining deeper areas include the trenches. The deepest point is the 11-kilometer Mariana Trench off of the Marianas Islands in the Western Pacific. 
The distribution of these different heights and depths can also be shown as a histogram with the amount of surface area at each elevation plotted on the x-axis. The histogram reveals that there are two peaks in the elevation distribution, one just above sea level and another at around 4,000 meters below sea level. Treating land and sea separately, the overall mean height of the Earth's surface above water is at about 800 meters, and the mean depth of the sea floor is at about 3.7 kilometers below the surface. These two peaks represent the average height of the Earth's surface for each of the two types of crust. Continental crust is made up of relatively light granitic rock, and oceanic crust is made of more dense volcanic basalt. The denser combination of minerals in the oceanic crust is the reason ocean basins sit lower than land. In addition to revolutionizing earth science and geology, the availability of accurate bathymetric maps of the seafloor have contributed to a variety of areas. In science, they have improved ocean circulation models and helped identify important deep sea habitats because bathymetric data turns out to be a good predictor of habitat types and species distributions. The information contributes to hazard mitigation by identifying locations of undersea volcanoes and regions with high probabilities of slope failure. These maps are also used to identify opportunities for economic exploitation and to establish economic and national boundaries. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you want to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.